How are you doing? Welcome to livestream number 164. Today's topic is how you can save as a DXF file. This is uh, extremely important if you are using either a water jet, a uh, plasma cutter or a laser. A question I've gotten uh, quite quite many times over the years and I thought that, you know what, let's just do a quick uh, Fusion 360 cam uh, Friday on, on this specific topic. I hope you're doing well. I can see we already got uh, a few people in here. Absolutely appreciate that you guys are taking the time. Um, it is about ready for a long weekend here in the US. So um, hope that if you are in the US that you're ready for a nice long weekend. There will be no live stream on Monday, therefore. But enough of that. My name is Lars Christensen. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch these live streams. This is just trying to add a little bit more value to uh, your Fusion 360 experience. So today, today we are going to, uh, well, we're kind of continuing with this model that we worked a little bit with before my trip to Boston. Um, so this is kind of like a sheet metal type uh, part that you might want to uh, to laser out um, um, or cut out on either water jet plasma or out of a, a laser type machine. Uh, so I thought I would show a couple of tricks uh, uh, to do that, a couple of different ways you can do that inside of Fusion 360. Um, first of all, let me, and I, I'm gonna throw in a couple of tips just because I can't help myself. Um, first of all, don't uh, worry too much about my timeline down here, my history down here. Uh, that looks a little crazy, doesn't it? Uh, but that is again because this one is coming out of this um, airfoil uh, and, and, and go and check out the live stream um, <laughs> if, uh, if, for, for how to do that. Um, but this is kind of like a centerpiece for a rib in an airplane wing. Uh, we're going to cut uh, that out um, on like, a, like I said a water jet plasma or laser. One little trick if you didn't know, if your timeline starts getting... Uh, a little crazy um, left click on the first one hold down shift all the way down to uh, to the end so you select everything uh, while you're holding down shift you can right click and then you can actually say you want to create a group and uh, then your timeline gets put into a group you can actually name name this uh, this feature here um, so if you right click on it we can call this uh, design and now uh, this group in the history here is the sign, 60 features, as you can see, kind of like a little, uh, on the little thing there. Of course, if I hit the plus sign, boom, there is the whole thing uh, expanded. If I hit the little minus sign, it's back to that again. So I just wanted to show you that quickly. So if you ever get a design from somebody and you think that it's a little bit, uh, a long history, you can always start uh, grouping them and you can do certain sections uh, together. So, um, so I hope that is, that is useful. Okay, so two things um, I wanted to uh, quickly talk about when it comes to, uh, to this whole water jet plasma and laser. Um, there's kind of two ways to go about this. One is if you have one of these machines, uh, then many times they came with their own software where you, just, you really just want a DXF file type out of Fusion, you will load it into that software that came um, that came with your water jet plasma laser, uh, and, uh, and 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 you just want to load it in there and, and program it. That's the quick and dirty way. The other way is to use uh, the CAM function inside of Fusion, and there's actually kind of two different ways you can do that. So I want to show you that today. But let me just show you kind of like the quick and dirty. How the heck do you get a uh, your model um, out of? Why is my screen not switching here? Um, I'm hitting the wrong button. Uh, how do you get your model, uh, this model, and convert it into a DXF? It's actually not that uh, difficult. Um, you go ahead, you create a new sketch. So I have my my 3D model. I'll create a new sketch. Create a new sketch. I select one of the faces here. And what I want to do is I want to I want to have a sketch that has all the geometry that is in here. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. The, the P for project 
uh, in here, you probably have seen this one, uh, and that gives you a couple uh, of tools. We, we're mostly used to having it over here on speci specif uh, specified entities. And what that means, if I select this ads, it will, it will steal that edge. Um, but if you click on the body, the, and you click on it, so that's P for project, then it will actually take every edge of the pot. So this is probably what you mostly would do with a pot like this. Hit OK, and now you can actually stop this sketch, um, and you now have a sketch sitting on top of this part um, here that the sketch number nine is all these edges. To get it out to DXF, go into the sketches, and now again, I have all kinds of different sketches in here, but sketch number nine is the one we just created, and just right click on it, and then you can see here that you can save as DXF. So click on that and you will get a menu up here. Um, and this throws right in the download, that's fine. Let's call this one last live um, and save that file. The easiest way to check your DXF when you've, so many times when you've done this, uh, that's maybe when you're like, okay, now let me go out to, to the machine uh, and load it in out this file, put it on a thumb drive, go out to your machine, try to load it in. And then you find that you have forgotten some geometry. An easy way to check if you got everything you needed is to just open up another document and then go to insert, insert DXF. So you gotta select the plane, whatever plane, and then click on the little folder over here, click on your file, and then it will be brought in uh, into Fusion again. So we kinda like, we did what is kinda called round tripping. Uh, but this is just a really good way to just double check before you get your butt out to the machine and you're like, ah, and then you're going to go back into the computer again and, you know, you had to get a cup of coffee, so the computer timed out, now you're going to put in your pass password, all these things. So the easiest way to do this is literally open up a new, create a new sketch, do the P for project, select all the edges, and then go and write in the tree over here to the left, right click and say, save as a DXF. So that was your, your quick and dirty way uh, to, to get that in there. So um, I hope that that was useful. Now let me show you the two other ways uh, we can do it in, inside of CAM. Another way, let's get rid of this uh, sketch here, we don't need that anymore, is of course to use uh, the CAM tools inside of Fusion 360. And that will give you, uh, that will give you some, some, some added benefits over what I call the quick and dirty, just save it out as a, um, as a DXF. Uh, some of the benefits that maybe is, um, is worth uh, mentioning um, is if your design changes on, um, oh, I just mind it. I gotta show you this, my new t-shirt. Warning, I love talking about machining. <laughs> you probably noticed that if you're not into CAM. Um, so one of the benefits about doing uh, it using CAM inside of Fusion versus just saving it out as DXF is of course, if there is a design change. If this model changes, um, you will have to go through this procedure again, open up a sketch, project, save it out as a DXF, load it out again, where if we're inside of the CAM environment, we can actually just you know regenerate our toolpath, and uh, and we can we can post it out. And I should say that there's two ways I'm going to show it inside a cam. Um, one of them is actually still as a DXF. Hmm, interesting. So uh, let's go in and, and play a little bit with the cam. But of course, I wanted to show uh, a couple of things as we're working with this. Um, one of them is that many times when you're doing parts like this you're not only uh, doing one, you kind of like have a whole sheet laid out of them. There's a couple of different ways you can, you can do a part. Um, one, um, probably the easiest is to use the pattern function. So I'm gonna go in here and say a rectangular pattern. Um, I'm gonna change this one over to, uh, to bodies right here. And uh, then I'm gonna select the direction, Let's select this inner edge, you just need like a, an edge Let's go and look at the front view here so we can see it. Um, I like spacing actually. Spacing in here. Let's make four of these. Like that. Uh, and then uh, you could also draw out 
in the other direction, right? So now we kind of like have, I don't know, four, eight, 12 of them. Um, and let's just, let me just say okay to this, okay? Now, one thing that maybe some of you guys noticed, uh, so now we have, let's just say again, so now we have all these parts, this is all great. Um, one of the things you might notice if I turn the origin on is that my, my origin is kind of sitting in the middle of this part. Again, you know, when I designed this part, I didn't think I uh, watered yet at all, and I'm sure this happens uh, to your, for you from, uh, from, from time to time um, also. So here's a neat little trick. Um, you could move the part, and this is where like maybe this timeline down here is important. If I right click and say move copy, and I have it set on bodies, and uh, I select this part somewhere, um, I could drag this part, but it doesn't really do much right now because I'm, everything inside of Fusion follows this timeline. What would happen if I grabbed this thing here and dragged it before the pattern? Oh, see how everything shifted over? Now, because I moved the move before the pattern, if I edit it again, and I move it maybe up like this, boom, now the patterns are good versus my, my origin. So I hope that that kind of made sense that uh, this move command, right click, move, uh, everything is following the timeline, right? So if that went a little bit too fast, rewatch, um, you know, rewind on, uh, at least if you're watching the recording and, and you can see that. Another thing I like to do when I'm doing uh, this kind of, of 2D cutting is I like to actually draw up my stocks. I'm gonna open a new sketch on the top plane here. Um, well, it's actually the front, but on the top to these parts. And uh, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. Normally you will uh, you would dimension this to, uh, to some kind of whatever, I don't know what it would be in metric right now. Bear with me, but we have some kind of a, a sheet. Um, this is how I normally do it. And then I normally, I extrude that as a solid. Um, and I think these parts are like 20 millimeters thick. Uh, make sure you do it as a new body. It's gonna be its own body because now that's gonna be over in the bodies folder down here. Uh, and I can use that as a stock. So when I get into cam, you gotta always start with a setup. Always start from the top and work your way down. Um, so I'm gonna select cutting because that is the, the cutting orientation here. Um, and uh, I like to go then into stock. And in this case, I'm gonna select from solid. I'm gonna select that solid body I created there. Uh, and I actually like to, I, I normally just hit okay for a second because then what I like to do is actually to go over here to the left find it and turn it off again. Now I kind of have that uh, that solid in there, go back into the setup, and now I can kind of edit um, edit the rest in here. So put my more uh, model origin down here. Uh, I'm not gonna get too far into this. Uh, we have done plenty of live streams on setup. Uh, and again, you can go slow and you can kind of see my, my picks and clicks. So now we have a setup uh, for the sheet here. Um, of course, if we're doing the 2D cutting, so like that, and uh, I'm just gonna go in, and I have a, a laser cutter that I just borrowed from the, the sample uh, profiling in here. So if I'm extending this out a little bit, you'll see we got the profile tools, metric or ins, you can do water jet, plasma, uh, or laser cutter, whatever you, whatever you kind, of, kind of want. Um, I think I picked laser cutter for this one. Um, one of the neat things that you have inside of the 2D profiling selection tool, so that's under the cutting here, is that we can say select same plane faces. And uh, if you set it here to all uh, all loops, it's gonna do the inside and the outside cut. And it's gonna do, you can choose here where you want it to start. It's gonna say from the outside. If I select this face, um, Fusion's gonna select all of them. Um, just like that, you can turn tabs on. If you want taps in here, so it's gonna be, be uh, leave a little tap. For this case here, I'm just gonna hit okay. And uh, it's gonna pro do the calculations. So it's gonna take two seconds. Maybe three. <laughs> Be patient with me here. 
Well, uh, it's Friday. Fusion is uh, Fusion is, is Fusion is, is ready to wind down the week. There we go. Uh, so here we have uh, our our different tool path. Um, in this case here, if we go in and we hit the simulate button, uh, we can kind of see all the different the cuts. It's gonna cut each of them, starting with the inside and then cut the outside of, of each of these ones. What I wanna to get to in regards to getting it out as code, so now you have two options in here um, when you go to the post process. You can either um, go and, and, and put in the post for your machine. And if you, if you are in a Windows machine, there's a link down here to the post uh, library page. I'm gonna click on that. If you don't, if you have a Mac, just go out and search, on, just go to Google and search um, Autodesk Cam Post, and you will get to this this page here. This page was just uh, revamped, and uh, of course the development team when they did this uh, added some really nice new functions in here that you really are going to like. Um, you actually now have an option to find somebody to help you adjust your posts uh, for for like if you need any specific customization. Uh, in in your post and, and I am just gonna say this I'm gonna get down on my from my my soapbox but when I was a Ritlam it was my rule that I never wanted to edit my post manually after I posted out my code I think it's extremely important um, that your posts are well trimmed and and, and and set up so I would always spend the time I, I used to modify my own post I would always spend the time on going there, tweaking them and making sure that I didn't have to go in manually and edit them. The reason for that is that's when you make the mistakes uh, if you're inside of that code, uh, deleting outlines and things like that. So now you have some options if you want to get help with that. You can either use support, you can use actually go in if you need specific um, adjustments uh, and go in and look at that. But what I wanted to show you here is that if we go to the type and we go down to a water jet laser plasma, what we're we talking about today. Check out all these different posts that there is actually is in there. So chances are that there is a post uh, fitting your uh, water jet plasma or laser cutter. So this here will generate uh, that code for, that's actually a lot, <laughs> um, that G code for your cutter. Um, and that can, like I said, the, the, the real benefit here is that when you change your solid model, you can just regenerate your toolpath. But the second option you actually have also in here is you can actually also, and you just down, I've made a live stream before, how you get these posts into uh, Fusion. Um, there is actually also one called AutoCAD DXF. So what this one will do is that one would also generate a DXF file uh, for that. So now you're saying, well, wait a minute, what what is the difference between this DXF uh, and the one that I showed you that I had created before inside of Fusion? Well, they're both, they're both DXF files, but of course you're getting some added uh, values if you're using the CAM environment. Like let's say, for example, you wanted the tabs, for example you could have actually that code posted out as a DXF where the tabs to hold on to that you defined in the CAM workspace so you don't have to do it out on your software out on the side. So just a quick thing for you uh, here on a Friday uh, for you to kind of um, to think about if you have uh, one of these uh, machines. So again, just to, to regenerate, regenerate? Recap, I guess I'm trying to say I'm ready for Friday too. Uh, either go out and create a sketch uh, like I did in the beginning um, and project everything over there, right click and you can save as a DXF here, or you can go into the cam environment and you can either post your your cuts for your water jet plasma laser. When you post it out, you can either choose if you want to do that to one of the generated post processors, what to me probably is the most elegant way, if you, if you, you, know, if you get that set up, then you're all set. No, then there's no different, 
then if you post out to your CNC mill or, or lathe, um, and you now don't have to worry about some you know old uh, Windows uh, you know XP software uh, if that's what your third provider is. And then of course, um, like I said, it's important for me to just point out where the heck is it is in alphabetic order that there is also in here you have a third option you can post that code out as a DXF, but we'll give you uh, some some different ways to do that too. That. That was uh, about what I had planned on showing uh, in this uh, in this live stream uh, on this Friday afternoon. I hope that this uh, was was useful. Uh, a couple of different uh, tips and tricks, not only just with CAM but actually also inside the modeling space. I bet you there was somebody out there who didn't know that you can group your timeline when it becomes uh, really long. So um, man. I hope that uh, that you found this this useful. Um, there will not be any live streams on Monday because it is a holiday here in the U.S. I will probably be sitting on my porch with a cold beer or something like. Well, maybe probably doing yard work or something. Hope you have an awesome weekend planned. If you like this, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. If you don't, please be honest, thumbs down. And again, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. I would truly appreciate you will do that. That's kind of like how I can go to my boss and say, hey, look, people are actually uh, kind of like into uh, to watching these. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch today's live stream. Um, if you are watching the recording, appreciate it. If you're inside of uh, the live stream, I'm going to jump in there and, uh, and say hi to everybody. So until the next time, have an awesome, awesome weekend.